London holds the title of Global Economic Hub, with dominance among the world's major economic cities. Even the cataclysmic warning during the 2016 referendum about the dire consequences of leaving the European Union, many financial analysts predicted that London would lose its financial throne. But all forecasts have proven to be incorrect so far. London is still the world's banker, and it has grown in some ways. London is extremely resilient with numerous economic pillars securing its future as a financial center. One thing that distinguishes London is that it is the United Kingdom's leading net exporter of financial services. The service industries, particularly financial services, drive the London economy. Aside from that, the associated professional services contribute significantly to the economy in other parts of the UK and around the world. On the contrary, cities such as Venice and Amsterdam have struggled economically and have held and lost the title numerous times. The only time the supremacy of London's title was called into question was when the UK decided to leave the EU, which was interpreted as a loss of passporting rights for British firms. It was a major concern, and many experts criticized the move as a self-destructive decision that would undermine London's position, as the heart of the international monetary system. However, everything has gone relatively well for London, and its traces can be found in a variety of historical and current plans. London's main financial district is a city in and of itself. The city of London, founded a few years after the Roman invasion in AD 50 on the north bank of the Thames, has its own mayor and governing body, the City of London Corporation. Commerce flourished in the city, as it did in other ports, attracting merchants and entrepreneurs from all over. According to historian Peter Borsi, the population of London increased from 50,000 to 60,000 in the 1520s, to a million by the end of the 18th century. According to historical demographer Tony Wrigley, it saw an average of 8,000 immigrants per year between 1650 and 1750. These merchants formed guilds and wielded considerable influence and power. They were able to secure autonomy as well as special freedoms and rights for the residents, which are still enjoyed by businesses in the area today. The merchants also ventured into banking and helped to develop the industry. The Bank of England, which stands in the heart of the city, was founded in 1694 by merchants to fund the government's military efforts during the Nine Years' War. It was granted various long-term privileges and eventually became a monopoly. Coffee shops, which were plentiful within the city's walls at the time, were used as makeshift offices or what would become financial institutions. Stockbrokers who did business in Jonathan's Coffee House in Change Alley founded the London Stock Exchange. Similarly, the Lloyds of London's insurance market was named after a coffee shop on Tower Street, frequented by marine underwriters. There was little doubt about where financial activities would be concentrated in the United Kingdom. An ancient banking tradition, a major port, the capital seat, the hub of the railroad network built after 1830. All forces were brought to bear on the single locality, which itself had a minor ambiguity between the city and the West End. The different banking systems of Ireland and Scotland reached across their borders and linked up with London, wrote economic historian Charles P. Kindleberger in the formation of financial centers. In the 17th century, Amsterdam was the world's trading and financial center, and London borrowed and improved on its financial innovations. It developed a market-centered system in contrast to the Dutch city's bank-centered one, and it grew more dominant in the 18th century as the Netherlands experienced economic and political decline. Until the mid-19th century, London competed with Paris to be the largest global financial hub. Paris suffered a setback in 1848 when the Bank of France suspended specie payments following France's defeat in a war with Russia. Since the Bank of France suspended specie payments, its use as a specie reservoir has come to an end. No one could write a check on it and be certain of receiving gold or silver in exchange. As a result, the Bank of England bears the entire liability of such international cash payments," wrote Walter Baghot. In his famous 1873 book, Long Hard Street, a description of the money market. Instead of being one of two great settling houses of exchange transactions in Europe, 
London has become the sole great settling house of exchange transactions in Europe and London's preeminence will almost certainly be maintained as it is a natural preeminence. The number of mercantile bills drawn on London far outnumbers those drawn on any other European city. London is the place that receives and pays more than any other, and thus it is the natural clearing house. The preeminence of Paris stemmed in part from a distribution of political power that is now disrupted. London reigned supreme until the outbreak of World War I, when it began to face difficulties in maintaining its role as a center for foreign reserves and a source of short and long-term credit. According to Kindleberger, during this time, the United States grew in importance as a financier, and the New York Stock Exchange surpassed the London Stock Exchange. According to Kindleberger, New York was briefly the world's financial center after World War II until the Euro-dollar market developed in the 1950s, and London took the lion's share of it. Because of English common law, the Bank of England was able to allow the lightly regulated offshore market to flourish, and hundreds of foreign banks established branches in London. The United States had its own version of common law and could have adopted and developed the parallel market in New York. But the government chose not to do so and instead adhered to strict financial regulations. According to economist Ronan Pallon, this was due to the fact that while the United States was a rising hegemonic power focused on developing its manufacturing and commercial sectors, the British Empire was a declining hegemonic state with a weak manufacturing and commercial center, and a relatively powerful financial sector. The city of London developed at the heart of the British Empire, somewhat divorced from the needs of the United Kingdom's mainland economy to finance trading and manufacturing throughout the formal and informal British Empire," he wrote. Despite being nationalized in 1948, the Bank of England was effectively controlled by the city's commercial banks. Even when such policies were seen as harmful to the UK's mainland manufacturing needs, the Bank of England consistently pursued policies that favored the city's position as a world financial center. In a country with a declining manufacturing sector, the pound was consistently overvalued and interest rates were relatively high. However, the square mile had not yet definitively defeated Wall Street. Not only is London's strong financial history one of the primary reasons for its development as the world's economic capital, but a future London plan is being developed to accelerate the city's economic development. The development blueprint aims to make London the best city in the world by implementing specific strategies. The City of London's plan prioritizes emerging sectors such as e-commerce, environmental industries, healthcare, and tourism to contribute to the economy and stabilize it during times of global slowdown. The remarkable potential of the e-commerce industry has positioned it as a strong contender to be a significant contributor to the London economy. This fastest growing industry has enormous growth potential. The plan focuses on developing cutting edge information and communication technology, building cutting edge infrastructure, establishing innovation centers, developing flexible tech startup policies, and establishing incubator units to promote entrepreneurship, among other things. Since its inception, commerce has thrived in the city, transforming it into an epicenter that attracts merchants and entrepreneurs from all over the world. This rapid growth attracted a large number of immigrants, and merchants quickly rose to positions of influence and were able to secure autonomy. The merchants also established the banking sector, which led to the establishment of the Bank of England. Coffee shops were converted into makeshift offices, which later became well-known financial institutions. The London Stock Exchange, which now accounts for 32% of all global transactions, gave this city economic superiority. Later, the insurance market developed and experienced tremendous growth. London is now the preferred operations center for roughly two out of every three Fortune 500 companies. Despite the fact that London attracts approximately 30 million tourists from all over the world, the city's development plans continue to focus on making tourism a significant contributor to the city's economy. The plan focuses on improving London's image and making it a more appealing tourist destination. The plan's main concerns are modern infrastructure, projects, and organizing international events. Environment-related industries. Environmental industries that are flourishing are the key to a strong economy. The plan for London's economic development focuses on market development, funding, 
land use policies, promotion, and encouraging niche industries. The emphasis is also on the development of sustainable methods, the promotion of recycling, and the encouragement of businesses to generate green business opportunities. London has always drawn the world's elite to its medical facilities. As a major global healthcare player, the plans aimed to make the healthcare industry world-class in the future. Harley Street is well known throughout the world for its high standards of care and client discretion. The London cosmetic surgery sector is a case in point, where celebrities from the media, business, arts, and film come for a facelift or tummy tuck, safe in their knowledge that they will be out of the paparazzi's way. The London Healthcare Plan also aims to make healthcare facilities available to all sectors of society.